You have in your hand? I am what this word says I am. I do what this word says I do. And I have what this word says I have. I am, I do, and I have. Or probably I have and I do. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's look in Romans. I said, you know, uh, I was talking about this and um, the Lord impressed in my heart to talk about this powerful revelation that I was, when I was preaching, and I was preaching in, in another message, but part of it was this Bible verses. It really touched my heart. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me while I was preaching. Um, so let's look in Romans 1 chapter one and let's start in verse 18 amen and when you have it say amen we're going to read it together and the message today is do you know god do you really know who god is and he says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. Let's repeat that verse again. Since what may be known about God it's plain to them. It's plain to who? No. It says there to the wicked. To the ones that have no God. It's plain to them. Amen? Because God has made it plain to them. Who made it plain to them? God made it plain to them. You know, how many people come to you and tell you this? Ask you this question. I have that question asked many times. Um, how could a loving God send anyone to hell? That Have you had people ask you that question? How could a loving God send anyone to hell? Especially someone who has never heard about Christ? I had that question asked many times. You know, you say you serve a loving God. How a loving God can send somebody to hell? How a loving God can send to hell people that have not heard about Christ? But let me tell you this verse right here. Verse 18 and 19 tells you something very clear. And the Bible bears witness that God has revealed himself plainly. Plainly. Say we mean plainly. In the creation to all people. So God has revealed himself already. There's an inner revelation of God inside each one of us. And there's also an external revelation of God for each one of us. Amen? You don't even have to hear about Christ. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. That's what this verse is telling you. It's been plainly revealed. God has plainly revealed himself to everybody, to the godless people, to the wicked people. God has plainly revealed himself to them because God has made it plain. Amen? What does that mean? That even somebody from Timbuktu that died, or probably a, a somebody that indigenous, some native that probably never heard of Jesus Christ, there's an inner revelation of God in each one of us. So God does not send anybody to hell, not even those that we perceive have not heard from Christ, because he has revealed himself to everybody. 
to even the atheists that says that they do not believe in God until the plane starts going down. Then they say, oh my God. Amen. Until the gun, the gun is pointing at them and said, oh my God, help me. Suddenly the atheist starts believing. <laughs> I remember um, Jesse Duplantis was, one time he travels a lot and he was saying that he was in a plane <laughs> and he had, he's been, he had some close encounters like two or three times already in planes. So this time it was bad, really bad. The plane was shaking horrendously. The drop, the thing for oxygen dropped. You know, the, the, the cups of water were flying all over the place. And then when, when he got in the plane, he was, you know, he was on first class and he was sitting with this guy. And, the, you know, the, he, he always, he's a very talkative person, so he introduced himself. And uh, he started telling him, you know, I work for the best boss in the world and he pays me very good and I have good in health insurance. And that's how he started his conversation. And the guy close to him said, who, who, so who's your boss? He said, God. <laughs> so, you know, the, then the guy told him, you know, um, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. So, you know, they had a nice conversation, but then the plane starts shaking. The water starts falling. The oxygen starts dropping. The guy starts shaking. And he looks at Jesse and Jesse because Jesse said, Do not fear. I'm in this plane and I'm praying this plane is not going to go down. And the guy looked at him and said, Can you pray for me? <laughs> Can you pray for me? So the atheist believes in God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible bears witness. God is telling us that he has revealed himself plainly. Say it to me, plainly. What plainly means? That is, that is being simple. That everybody can get it. Say it with me. Everybody can get it. Hallelujah. He has done to, that for all people. So people reject God because they want to reject God. People don't want to know anything about God just because they want to serve themselves. Amen? That's the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> so there was this group of Sunday school teachers at Calvary Temple in, that was in California. They asked their students this question. What do you think God looks like? Here are the answers the children gave. A human being with a heart, feet, eyes like fire, and he shampoos his hair every day. <laughs> He's tall, has gray hair, yellow skin, and brown sad eyes, just like my puppies. I'm sure probably God has some sad times. He's tall and he looks like my daddy. And he wears a jumpsuit on weekends and has a bald head. <laughs> I think God has nice eyes. He wears a very pretty robe and has a beetle haircut. I wonder where this service was taken. <laughs> a beetle haircut. He has white hair and his eyes are bloodshot. He's tall, black hair, wears sharp clothing and a hard necklace. It's a holy view view of God, I suppose. He looks like Billy Graham. <laughs> he looks like Jesus, but I tell you a secret. I'm not sure because I've never seen him. <laughs> he's an old man because all of all the year he's been alive. <laughs> he looks like whatever you want him to look like. Interesting observation, that one. Some truth to that. He's the picture of health. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and I he think he's an old man with a long gray beard and he sits on a throne like a king and drinks all the Dr. Pepper he wants. <laughs> Somebody likes Dr. Pepper. 
you know, and, and, and we laugh at this, but everybody has a concept about God that, that many times is not the truth. Tell your neighbor, do you know God? Okay? And let me tell you, even some of us look at a God as somebody that is um, an old man upstairs, you know, that he is weak and he's helpless and he's created days are over. He's parting the sea, the Red Sea are over. He can no longer deliver um, people from the mouth of lions. He has no strength or no power. He's helpless. How many know that this is wrong? We have a powerful God. Hallelujah. But somebody believed that. Oh, there's no miracles anymore. You know, God is just, you know, it's just a concept. Um, things already happen, but they're not going to happen anymore. Miracles are already done, and that's not going to happen. How many believe that miracles are still happening every day? How many believe, hallelujah, that we have a powerful God? How many believe, hallelujah, that he can move mountains if we believe? Hallelujah. Others have, you know, this concept of God that he's this great judge in the sky. You know, he's, he, just, he just can't wait to send people to hell. <laughs> they have this, um, this concept of God like Judge Judy. How many watch Judge Judy? You know, wow, wow, you know how she is. I'm not here because I'm pretty. They have me here because I'm smart. You know how she says. So, or oh, maybe, you know, the story of a, a grandmother that a 41-year-old granny in Springfield, Oregon, he was, she was 5'5", five five, and she took down a six-foot-tall teenager who stole the truck. She was driving, and her grandchildren were in the truck. So the woman chased down the truck, pulled the driver out, started slapping him. <laughs> By the time she was finished, he was crying and the truck was back in her possession. That's one tough grandma. <laughs> Amen. How many need one like that? So people feel, you know, that, that God is like that and they're slapping people away and, and, you know, with their little magic wand, you know, taking people <laughs> and punishing people because they're doing wrong. You know, Many times I'm going to tell you the wrath of God is, is going to come down. It did when the flood happened. But I'm telling you, we're in the dispensation of grace right now. Most of the things that happen to you is because of you. We're always blaming God about things. It's because of the consequences of sin. And you need to be honest to yourself. You know, when you tell your child not to touch the, you know, the stove because they're going to get burned. But they decide to touch the stove and they get burned. Whose fault is that? Is the parent's fault? Hello? Is the kid's fault? The parent gave them some instructions. The child was disobedient. Because of the disobedience, there were consequences to his disobedience, and it became a punishment. Who punished him? Himself. Because of disobedience. Amen? And many times that's what happened in our lives. Because of disobedience, sins will come. Because God had told you many times what to do, and you didn't do it. And we need to be honest with ourselves and understand, don't point at God or either point at yourself or point at the enemy because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, this is the way God wants me. No, that's not the way God wants you. God want, doesn't want you sick. God doesn't want you in a bed. God wants you preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. God wants you healthy. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants you to be able to go up and down preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what God wants. 
And we need to know who God is. And we need to be honest with ourselves. Let's examine ourselves. Disobedience, even small situations and details or small things, is going to bring consequences. Tell your neighbor, disobedience brings consequences. So some people see God as this old man that does not have power. Some people see God as this judge that is there just to waiting for you to, make, to mess up. Some people have no concept of God because they claim there is no God. Let me tell you something, some, some facts. Do you realize that every square yard of the sun is constantly putting out 130,000 horsepower or the equivalent of 458 cylinder automobile engines? And yet our sun as powerful as it is, is but a minor star. It's a minor star, the sun for your information. It's a minor star in the 100 billion orbits which make up our Milky Way galaxy. Talk about a powerful and awesome God. Amen? Let's talk about a powerful and awesome God. Let's see some pictures. And I hope today that still others view God as the great creator and the loving heavenly father, which hopefully is your view today. Amen? <clears throat> How many have seen here a child being born? <laughs> How many of <are>? Four. <laughs> it's such a miracle. Just seeing a baby being born, you have to believe in God. Amen? Just the fact that the baby needs to be born, the, you know, the, and, and I'm going to talk about a little bit of terms here. The, the reason that the baby goes through the vaginal canal, and sometimes when the, the child, children are born in C-section, it doesn't, they don't have that advantage. It's because they squeeze when they go to the canal, and I know I have children here, but they, you, you get that in school. Hello. <laughs> It squeezes the lungs. It squeezes the lungs to allow the, the child to expand his lungs. So it squeezes that fluid out. Everything that God does has a purpose. Amen? You need to see the wonder of the God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You know, we need to know God so we can live this life that God has given us. Hallelujah. And live it the way he wants us to live it. Because knowing God shapes our lives. Tell your neighbor, knowing God shapes your life. It shapes your life. It forms your life. Amen? And today, you need to Make a commitment that you need, you want to be like God. I want to imitate who he is. I want to imitate his nature. I want to imitate his attributes. You know, I remember my, my brother wanted to be Superman. So um, one day, I think he was so, um, 10 years old, and he was by the grace of God, because we were Christians, we were already saved and um, my parents, we brought my parents to church, my brother and I. And um, so we lived in this house. It was the second floor. And you were able, we were able to go. My, my father built like a, a terrace. So you were able to jump from the terrace to the little, in Puerto Rico, you know, all the houses are in cement. So we were, you were able to jump into this little corner. I don't know how to call that in the houses. That a, a little bevel of, of cement. So he put a, a, a sheet in his neck, you know, because he was Superman. And he jumped from that second floor, that little cement bevel. He jumped and flew and landed on the 
terrace down on the terrace that was cement, but you know, the good one. My brother cracked his head. He did crack his head. And he had a little bleed in his in the in the brain. That's why sometimes we said he was a little crazy, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, my, my father, sometimes when he was behaving, said, do you remember? Remember his fall? You know, that's why he's not writing his head. I said, how long are we going to use this excuse? <laughs> but, you know, he did. He, he, because he, he thought he was Superman. You know, and many of us, we try to imitate. Thank God he did well. He was in the hospital for a while, and, and he, well, some of you know him. He's okay. So... Some of us imitate many people, or we try to be like somebody else. Why don't you make a commitment today to be like Jesus? Hallelujah. To imitate him. So let's read in 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. It says this. But just as he who call you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Are you being holy in everything that you do? Are you being holy the way you treat your husband or treat your wife? You being holy the way you treat your children? Or the way you treat your friends or your family members? For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Hallelujah. Do you understand that concept? Be holy as I am holy. It's time for us to stop using that crutch. That we are all, oh, I'm a human. You know, I'm human. It's, it's time to stop that. Because that's a pure excuse that justify all the mistakes that you make. It's time to make a commitment. I am going to be holy as he is holy. I am going to, like Philippians 4, 8, I'm going to have the thoughts of goodness, honest thoughts, everything that is good, that's what I'm going to think about. I'm going to be perfect as he is perfect. Few amens, but it's the truth. Because the truth is going to set you free. Amen? So it's time for us to start saying, you know, I'm just a human being. It's time for us to say as Christians, we are the children of God. We are to walk in holiness. We are to follow his example. We are to imitate Jesus. Amen. Just put your hands together for him. I'm sure you had, you had your your heroes when you were younger it started it's time to have your hero of heroes and imitate him because you need to understand people do influence people and we are influenced by others by our if we if we allow people to influence our behavior we allow our pe people to influence our attitudes we allow people to influence our thoughts and it's time to allow God to influence every area of your life. Hallelujah. Your spirit, your soul, and your body, your thought life, your emotions, and your will. Number two, knowing God empowers us for living. Oh, there, was, there were some more pictures. Let's check the other pictures. The eye. Just one day, just sit down and, and, and just read about the eye. You're going you're gonna to think that the bang theory is going to make this? There's no such bang theory. Amen? You think just by chance there was an explosion and then poof, you became to be? No, brothers and sisters. There's no such bang theory that does not exist. That is a lie. An eye 
after the brain is the, is the most perfect organ in the body. Through the eye, you can diagnose diseases. The eye is the only external part of your brain. It doesn't boggle your mind. Who can have created all this? Just think about it. Amen? Next picture. Who can have created all the galaxies? All the universe? All the planets? The earth rotates constantly in a perfect way. So we have day and night. The sun is in a perfect place so we don't get burned or we don't freeze to death. Your heartbeat never stops. Hopefully it should be, it should be around 80 or 90, no more than that, 70 preferably. But it beats all the time consistently. <laughs> Who do you think all did all that? Let's see the next one. Let's see that video. Look at that. It's called the Archer Fish. Look what he does. That's a cricket. You know what he's doing? He's he's spit. You see what happened to the to the cricket? What happened to the cricket? You saw it or you didn't see it? He spits this glue, okay? And this glue wraps the prey and falls down and he eats it. And he aims so perfectly that he gets, who's gonna do that? Hello? Who's going to do that, brothers and sisters? Say it. God. Only God. <coughs> There's a set of birds that when they, they're, they're born, the parents, for some odd reason, the daddy and mom bird leaves. And they go all the way, I think it's to New Zealand. When the little birds are ready, and they stay there, the little birds are ready, they have inner GPS. They start flying, and they find their parents. All the way through the other side of the world. Who does that? Who does that? Hallelujah. God, who creates those beautiful feathers on a peacock? And we have here one. God. Just look at your neighbor and see the wonders of God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in Romans 1 that the invisibility of God is revealed in the nature his power, his power and his divine nature is revealed through just looking at Mike. I can see the power of God. I can see the attributes of God. I can see the nature of God. Hallelujah. So when you know God, he changed your life. When you know God, he empowers us so we can live the life that we need to live. And we know God. He enables us to love one another. Hallelujah. That is, you tell me, brothers and sisters, today that you know God, you need to love your brother. Doesn't matter if you like the brother or you don't like the brother. Because the Bible says, 
Let us love one another, for love comes from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And whoever does not love your brother does not know God, because God is love, 1 John 4, 8. Because God is love. He's, he doesn't have love. He's the essence of love. Hallelujah. So today, I encourage you, if you know God, if you say you know God, if you truly say you know God, he's shaping so you can live the life that you need to live. And if you truly say that you know God, he's empowering you today to live the life that you need to live. And if you say you know God, you need to love your brother. And even love your enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the essence of love is in you. Tell your neighbor, the essence of love is in you. Because God is in you. I'm just going to ask you to stand up if you need prayer. Just where you're at. If you feel that the patterns of your life have not been the proper ones and you say, Pastor, I've been probably imitating the wrong things and looking at the wrong places. 